way about it. Let him you. Yeah, okay. I remember the day you kidnapped me vividly, the day you stole my life away from me, the way your lips lured me in with a taste of candy as the gift of sweet promises escaped you. You said, come, run into my arms and I will comfort you. Grab my hand and I'll make all your problems go away from you. So I believed you, clung to you, devoted my life to you. As I remember thinking, this, this is what love is. When I should have been thinking, this is what abuse is. Because the truth is, fear had crippled my existence. My legs, arms, and hands unable to fight you off as you pinned my back against the table. Where using your slimy fingertips, you made us to stitch a shame-laced veil over my vision. Until my reflection reflected nothing but the tears of a missing person, crying out for someone to bring her back home. Oh. I was crying out for someone to tell me that I wasn't alone, that I wasn't the only one fighting this, that I wasn't the only one hearing voices say I wasn't worth another breath. Voices telling me I was weak. Too weak to starve, too faint to fight back, too ballless to man up enough courage to make myself puke. By my ears, you would linger. You would whisper anything you could to show that you were superior. Then 5,000 calories later, you would switch to play in the role of the waiter that wouldn't let me say another word until I had every last dessert because that's what the fat girls do. We stuff our faces on a daily basis and make comments like, ha, huh, that was cookie number six. So the society would brush off the half hotter confession like it was just a hyperbole, when in reality, it was an understatement. It was cookie number seven, followed by four other brownies previously. You forced me to do these things, you bastard. You see, I was your slave, too scared to run away, too lost to find my way back to the time before you got your hands on me. You had morphed me into an addict that needed the daily fix of your so-called love. Knowing that drained and drugged, I kept quiet. Hid wrappers and napkins before placing them in trash cans so that parents and friends wow. would never get suspicious about my self-medication. You said they wouldn't understand our relationship. And I knew then and know now that there is truth in this worth believing because society makes fun the girls that eat their feelings. They seem to be binge eating as something self-sabotaging, avoidable, easily controllable. They say this condition is not excusable. But it was words like these that left me fragile. Comments that got me convinced freedom was not something worth dreaming. I remember screaming out to God, begging him to give me anorexia, wanting desperately to be thin enough for my ribs to protrude the cage, suffering through my skin. As to prove to people that I was barely making it, because with minimal visible symptoms, it's so easy to fake it. So easy to hide the number of times I contemplated suicide under t-shirts marked two sizes too big. I was the Elizabeth Smart victim getting ripped apart when no one ever seemed to notice that the girl living right in front of them was living a life of imprisonment. I owed my existence to our relationship. Need to pay you back for my inconvenience. Your very justification for when you began raping me in the seventh grade. Impregnating my self-image with the food baby image that the situation couldn't be aborted. That I was yours and you were mine, but you've had to apologize way too many times. I'm done. I will no longer allow your ignorance to continue invading my innocence. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. You will no longer tarnish my existence. Yeah. This isn't rebellion. For like a civil war slave fighting for their freedom, I'm simply taking back what was rightfully mine to begin with. So take this as my emancipation proclamation. I am finally going home. Yeah. 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 Yeah.